And welcome back, everyone, to the Box Office Report today on the 9th of June, 2024. Uh, so, I, uh, I don't think I got the box office right. I thought the watches would be number four or two. But more importantly, um, yeah, sorry as it took so late, Box Office Mojo normally updates anywhere between like 2 to 3, 34 at the latest. Didn't update till like 6 today. So I don't know if that's a new schedule or if someone was being lazy, whatever. I haven't actually looked at these numbers yet or anything else, so let's just get into it. Not surprisingly, Bad Boys Ride or Die debut with $56 million, uh, for number one spot. Garfield movie dropped only another 28.6% for another 10, a little over $10 million. If made her a little over $8 million, 23.8% uh, drop, uh, losing 201 screens for number three spot. The Watchers debuts at number four with $7 million. And Kingdom of the Planet of the Eights made her $5.4 million, dropping her 39.8%. Uh, Bad Boys, Ride or Die, 56 million domestically. Worldwide, right now it's 104 million, 48.6 million. I said it in my review, I will say it again, and I'll keep saying it until we see where the actuals are going to land. But the success of this film is going to hinge on how much people have forgiven Will Smith. That's simply, that, that's simply a fact. That if a lot of the public isn't ready to forgive Will Smith yet, then this film's going to suffer. If a lot of people are okay, have just decided, okay, you know, he he did it. It was terrible. He still hasn't given him a uh, Chris Rock a personal apology, as far as I know. And as far as I know, he hasn't. He did that, like, public apology. He was like, dude, personal apology. Come on. But he's been banned from the Oscars for a decade. He has lost out on a lot of work because of that. And the details, a lot, some of the details of his marriage have come more to light. And, yeah, I personally think he's, he's definitely... Um, he's definitely paid a price. He's definitely paid a price. And he's still going to be paying a price, because there's still going to be a chunk of people who don't go out to see this movie simply because of that. But, as it stands, I saw the movie, I enjoyed myself. I, and I can honestly say, you know what? I'm just ready to let Will be Will on the big screen again. Let his personal stuff be his personal stuff. Let him deal with that on his own time, in his own way, as long as he doesn't make it public again. Or, or he doesn't, like, go off the rails again. And I enjoyed it, and apparently, a lot of it you went out to go see it, or at least a lot of people went out to go see it, because this is between, I believe this is like between 50 and 70 is where they were predicting it. So it came in on the low side of the projections, but it still came in in the projections. 56 million, which, honestly, based on what I saw for what the budget is, about 100 million, that's a damn good opening weekend. That's, a, that's the best opening weekend we've seen thus far for the summer weekend. That's for sure, a certain, or summer weekends. Uh, for the summer season, because we have Furiosa, Fall Guy, like, uh, if doesn't count, um, Garfield. Nothing opened very strong this year past Godzilla vs. Kong. Your, only, your, big three, your three big openings this year so far have been Dune, Godzilla, and uh, Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> So, yeah, and, all, and I think Ghostbusters, I guess, qualifies because they were roughly neck and neck, those two. Yeah, and so the highest opening weekend this year has been in the 90s. So to have a $56 million opening weekend is good. That's over half the budget. I have to believe this did not have more marketing than, like, say, $50 million because we only really just kept getting the same trailer over and over again. So my, I'm willing to bet there's not much more than $50 million in marketing in this. I'd have to find that out down the road. Uh, so you're looking if it's made on that uh, 100 million with 50 million, then you've got do you do the math 75. You're looking at a film that only has to hit 230 to break even. That's not an impossible feat, especially with the uh, domestic taken. Plus the international is going to come in. Let's actually you know what? That's something we can let's check how well the other Bad Boys films did. That I think is a fair thing to check. So let's see here, Bad Boys, Bad bo Bad Boys, which the well, Bad Boys. <laughs> <laughs> bad Boyd. Um, bad Boy. Okay. Original Bad Boys, 1995. Uh, was made on 19 million, made 141 million. It made good money. Uh, so there you go. So the next film that came out, Bad Boys 2, came out, uh, was made on about 130 million budget. Whoa. Is a massive increase on a budget. Like, what the hell? Come on, Bay. Um, may, but made $273 million and the marketing back then was probably nowhere near as big. So they still made money. And then you had bad boys for life, which came out, may opened up with $90 million, but made $426 million. So you knew they were going to make a fourth one. So, 
so yeah, it the series has just been going up and up and up. And I think, if I'm correct in the uh, and correct in assuming, I think this is the highest opening for any of them. Uh, opening, nope, this is the second highest. Sixty-two was the uh, most recent one. So yeah, this is a good number. And the international seems to speak that this is going to have a at least a decent international 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 leg to it. Uh, at least 150, I'm guessing internationally overall. Which means if I just add 150 onto here right now, not even factoring in any extra domestic, you're looking at a film that makes 206 million dollars. Um, so yeah, we'll see where this play goes. But looks like the looks like this is actually the real kickoff to the summer movie season. Because May was a big fart in the wind this year. It really was. Uh, nothing that came out except for Garfield was really making money. And everything, uh, we'll talk back. We'll talk more about this in just a minute. But everything is just is just struggling for whatever reason. But Bad Boy seems to be a good breath of fresh air into the summer movie season, so that's good. Speaking about the other movie, that's only other movie this May that made um, money. Garfield made extra ten million plus this weekend for 192 million worldwide. Oh, the movie is definitely in the profitable range now. Sixty million is the bar budget on this. Marketing, I'm guessing at most 40, maybe even 50, but I would say 40, just to round it up to 100. But even if it is 50, which is also reasonable to think, hell, even if it's 60, even if it's the same, which I don't think it is, you're, you still got a movie that made its money back now. Uh, and I don't, like I said, I don't think it is. My guess is we're looking at a movie that had to make 150 and it's done that. Now Sony can just eat up all that extra cash. So I guess the question quickly becomes, why is Garfield is such a successful movie this year so far? And I think the answer to that is actually very simple. There has been nothing since Kung Fu Panda out that's a four-quadrant film for families. Kung Fu Panda was raking in as much profit as it did because it had absolutely no competition. Garfield has also had, until this coming week, no competition. It was... And Kung Fu Panda had been long since ended its run or been its final gasping days when Garfield came out. So it has had no competition. Even though the critical reception hasn't been great, the audience reception seems to be good. The kids are now out of school, which is another huge thing. So with the kids being out of school or about to be out of school, a lot of free time in the, uh, during the summer. Go take the kids to a movie. They like Garfield. Garfield's the only thing out still. Let's go see Garfield again. So it it's not hard to figure out why Garfield has been able to make a decent amount of money. And it's going to continue to make a decent amount of money. Even with Inside Out 2 coming out this week, which is going to be a huge movie. Like they're projecting it like in the high Pixar numbers, which those are like at least 80 to 90 million dollar opening weekends. Um, even with Inside Out 2, this will still have at least some market. Uh, it's still gonna, You're still going to get people who go to see it, absolutely. Inside who's just going to cut into a huge amount of that. So, good on Garfield. I liked it fine. Like I said, it was harmlessly benign. <laughs> so, uh, I'm glad to see that it's doing well. Because the summer box office has needed a bit of life injected into it. Uh, and a little bit of energy in the box office. So, this is definitely working towards that. If made another $8 million plus. Now, if, and as I'll say to a little bit, in a little bit, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes are having really good legs. While they did not open strong, uh, Planet of the Apes actually opened okay. Um, <clears throat> Planet of the Apes, I should say, Planet of the Apes was one of the few that might also be making money, but it's kind of close, not teetering. If did not open strong, it's made on $100 million or 110 And it did, it didn't have a huge marketing budget, but it's still a, it's still a product where I'm guessing it still needs to hit like 260 ish just to break even. And I don't think it's going to do that, but it's got legs to it. Cause I think much like Garfield, there's nothing that is really like this out right now. There is no real four quadrant film like this. Cause this has something for the adults it has something for the kids of all ages. Now, again, the critical response was not the greatest. The audience response was a lot better. And I think that shows cause literally really when it comes down to it, the audience is where the money's coming from. That's where you're wreaking in your profit. Now, again, this is still not, uh, you know, still not the best scenario. It's still not going to be making its money back at this rate, unless there's a huge, unless somehow $50 million something shows up internationally for it. I don't see it making its money back. I really don't. 
But, and it sucks. I really like the film. There were points where I was getting very emotional watching the film. I had some, I had some manly tears going <laughs> that were about to come out of my body. I'm like, nope, not going to do it. Not going to do it. No, no, no. <laughs> um, either way, though, I am glad to see that it at least has some legs. We'll see where it ultimately ends up. It's already in its fourth week. But the fact is, it's only, t it's taking low, what was the, uh, let's take that with those percentage drops again, Lord. It's 23.8 this week. Uh, let's see, domestic drop-offs. So, its first drop-off was 50%, which makes sense, and then the Memorial Day weekend kind of came in. Then 34.9, then 28.3. It's losing screens and taking smaller drops. That is, see, that tells you that the audience likes it. I think what most likely happened and again, I think I've said this before, but I'll restate my case again, is that people kept seeing the same trailer over and over again. And much with like Fall Guy, they just got tired of the same thing over and over again. Plus, it's, it wasn't, a, because students weren't, or kids weren't out of school yet, and that would be a big uh, draw for this, or, or a big um, demographic to draw in. I have a feeling because we now have gotten to out, gotten to the summer movie season, like past a lot of like graduations or, you know, school ending. I think that played a factor in it where now that people are able to take their kids to the movies more, they are able to actually, you know, watch these films and be like, oh no, this was really good. Uh, so yeah, I think, uh, I think it got a bad rap with its marketing. I think the damn freaking release window, that 45 day release window is stupid as hell. Uh, we, that needs, that needs to go. We need to, and apparently Inside Out 2 is going to show that, oh yeah, well, we need that 100 day release window. Uh, because we're no longer in the day and age, people say that streaming, um, streaming is not an issue. Because, uh, you know, um, uh, VHS and DVD was not an issue, home release was not an issue. But it's a different world. Because if you're already paying for a streaming service and then it comes out, you don't then go out to buy uh, the movie, look for the movie, or then, because you could still go, because it's just free available now, there's no, there's no middleman now, it's just there, so I think between the lessened, uh, shortened release window, and the st streaming existing, I think that's hurting the theatrical experience quite a bit, at least to a certain degree, for like, these films that look good and are great experiences, but aren't capturing the audience enough to draw them into the, uh, to the theaters. So we'll have to see the watchers debuted with 7 million, uh, worldwide it's made 11.7 .7 million. Now I tried to find the budget on this. I can't find an exact budget, but the number I did see where I think they, uh, more numbers paid like 30 million to acquire or something like that. That would sound about right. I'll have to keep uh, looking around to see if I can find a budget. But that does sound about right, because there was visual effects in, in here to the point where I do see them needing at least some budget. But not, 30 is not a huge budget, and that makes sense. $7 million, though, is not good enough, and with the reception this film got, I do not see it being a big hit, unfortunately. It's not been a good year financially for horror. There's been some decent films, though. There's certainly been some decent films. Um, again, The Watchers, we actually felt were, was a pretty decent film. We liked it. I thought Imagineer was at least better than Night Swim, but Night Swim was god-awful. Uh, from what I understand, Strangers Pray at Night was not good. Abigail, from what I understand, was actually pretty okay. But I, I don't know. Um, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Manor 5.4 million. Another film taking great drop-offs. 559 million worldwide. So this is unfortunately where we get to the point with the Planet of the Apes film, where, or with this film, where I... I do not see this film making its money back now because it, if you look at that international number, that's a perfectly round figure. I think it's pretty, unless someone can point out another international market where or other international markets that has not been released yet. It's made all its money internationally. It's going to make, which means everything else now is just here. And that's not going to be enough. The film's $165 million in terms of its marketing budget or in terms of production budget. Even if I lowballed it to 75 million, which is still theoretically possible for marketing, if I lowballed it to that, I, then you're looking at a film that's made on 240 million. The film that means the film would, in theory, have broken, will break even and make a lot of money. That'd be great. The reality, though, is probably you're looking at closer to 100 million. 
I mean, again, I'd have to find it later on. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But if it is $100 million, you're looking at 265 then. And then that means you're looking at a film that still has to hit basically $400 million. That's another $41 million domestically, more or less $41 million domestically that has to make. It does not have that in the tank. It made $5.4 million this weekend. It does not have $41 million left in the tank domestically. It's probably got a best $20 million, if that. So, again, I'm going to have to double check to see what the marketing budget probably was on the film, but not good. Not good. Speaking of not good, Mad Max Furiosa. Uh, if, if I keep saying Mad Max, it's Furiosa Mad Max Saga. Mad Max Furiosa dropped another 60.6%. $144 million worldwide. Holy crap, what happened here? Well, let me tell you what I think happened here. Uh, because... It's got some of the best reviews that the Mad Max saga has ever had. It's been just a good... It's, it is a balls-of-the-wall action masterpiece kind of, to a degree. I think, actually, I think... Let me rephrase that. Fury Road is better. But this is still a really well-told story. The acting is all great. The action is visceral, intense, and practical, which people like to complain about. So why the hell did this not work? And I go back to what I said last week. I think... With the with exceptions, I think most people don't care about prequels. Wonka obviously was an exception, but Wonka was a very different film. It was a pure for your, it was a pure four quadrant film. You had the people who remember the original. You had new kid, uh, new fans as well. Young and old could enjoy it. It was bright. It was colorful. It was wonderful. Battle of Songbirds and Snakes barely made any money. So, but one person said Puss in Boots. And look, let me be very clear too. Prequels can work. When I said that, I'm not saying prequels can't work. Uh, I think Minions, The Rise of Gru is technically a prequel, but it's also a sequel. So it's a, those movies are in a weird middle ground. They really are. Uh, so I don't like to include them. But then you get into like the Fantastic Beasts and the Hobbit films. Sure, they made a lot of money, but they were also based on existing IPs that were so beloved that they were able to get people in regardless. And even then, the Fantastic Beast films started strong and then went, Meow. I don't even think the last one even made money. Or if it did, it barely did. So I I really think people don't care about prequels a lot. Exceptions aside. And then, again, it's not a four-quadrant film. The first Mad Max was not did not break it did not break down the box office. It did well, but it didn't break the box office down. Um then blow up with, with the numbers and then this is a sequel sorry this is a prequel to a sequel from almost a decade ago that i don't think people just i think it's just it's too little too late it's too little too late uh not even too late it's just too late like no one cared enough about the saga anymore or the series anymore so while i respect you george miller i really do first off 165 million bra come on Come on, you should have known better. Should have known better. Uh, I mean, 100 million easy, I can understand that. Maybe 125, but 165, that's an extra 40 freaking million there. And this, even if I had low balled to the 100 million, this film still wouldn't be making its money back. So, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a messed up, uh, <laughs> it's a messed up scenario, but it is what it is. And it's already lost 880 screens because, they're saying there's no reason to keep this in theaters if it's not making money. The Fall Guy, 2.2 million. Talking about a film that went is clearly going to digital very soon, if it hasn't already, but clearly found its legs too late. It's like people, because it has been taking minute, not minute, but small drop, took, dropped 50% the first weekend, makes sense. But then 39, 28.5, 29.8, 35. It's been taking less than 40% drop, drops, 30% drops for like those last few weekends. If only people cared enough to go out and see it on the opening weekend to make those drops actually matter. Like if this had made, I'm just doing a hypothetical right now. If this had made literally 50 million, if this had made like the bad boys numbers, 50 million, let's say, it would have been made now 25 the previous weekend. And then would have made, and I'm not even going to factor in the other amounts. And then you're talking about 39, it's so about 40 million. That means you're looking at a film that would have made what? Two, five, two, about 10 million, the, uh, 15 million, 15 million. So what are you, so you're adding that on there. That's 80 million right there. Then 20 some odd million, less than 30 from that. 
So now you're looking at a film that still makes about 11 million following that. So you're now looking at about 91. Drops almost the same. So now you're looking at about you're looking at about a film that would have made 100 million domestically plus any of the extra stuff it made over the weeks. So you're looking at a film that probably would be sitting at that extra 15, 180. At like 230-ish million already, if it had opened on 50 million. So it sucks. I've already gone into the explanation why I think it didn't work, unfortunately. In terms of like why it didn't attract anyone. But it sucks. It just really, really sucks to see a really good, fun film not get its uh, records due. Uh, but other films like A Stranger's Prey at Night will make 1.8 million at 37 million. It makes its money back despite being a piece of garbage for everything I heard. So... Yeah, that yeah, sucks. Uh, I mean, but good for... I mean, look, it sucks, but good for Lionsgate. They need some wins right now. Hakui, the dumpster battle. We fight with dumpsters. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it, it's pretty much done. In a violent nature, that film about a serial killer where you follow him, like, it's not... It wasn't going to make a lot of money anyway. Ezra, which is, I believe, a new Robert De Niro film. There's, there's really not much else to talk about. You know, you got... Civil War, which is pretty done. You got I uh, Tarot, which is also pretty done, but also was able to make its money back. Uh, you and like yeah, that that's literally it. If we look at the worldwide real quick here. Pretty sure like Kong and Godzilla are done. Yeah, they're done. That pisses me off. By the way, they were literally just a million away. But yeah, like we see like with the top ten of the box offices right now. Uh, you know, if Fall the Fall Guy Garfield's moving up. Uh, it's actually going to overtake Ghostbusters pretty soon. It's it's a bit of a choppy box office this year, but there's there's clearly the winners. Absolutely. So looking at this week's box office uh, compared to uh, next week's box office, I think we can all agree that Inside Out number two will be number one next week. Then followed by Bad Boys. I have no doubt Bad Boys will be number two next week. Garfield's probably going to, well, actually, let me double check the drop offs for both of these, because Garfield now, Inside Out 2 is going to completely wreck Garfield's momentum. Okay, so, obviously, Inside Out 2, Bad Boys. Mm -hmm. I'll actually go If. I'm going to go If, and then I'll go Garfield, because I think Garfield's going to take a bigger drop next week than If is, because similar animated properties, Inside Out, Garfield. But then I'll go If. And then I'm probably going to go Kingdom because I have a feeling The Watchers is not going to do well long term. So, again, I'll go Inside Out 2, Bad Boys, Ride or Die. Go If, Garfield, and then Kingdom. Till then, though, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.